You're listening to Weird Medicine with Dr. Steve on the Riotcast Network, riotcast.com. I've got diphtheria crushing my esophagus. I've got Ebola virus dripping from my nose. I've got the leprosy of the heart valves exacerbating my incredible woes. I want to take my brain out and blast it with the wave, an ultrasonic, echographic, and a pulsating shave. I want a magic pill for all my ailments, the health equivalent of Citizen Kane. And if I don't get it now in the tablet, I think I'm doomed and I'll have to go insane. I want a requiem for my disease. So I'm paging Dr. Steve. Dr. Steve. No. It's Weird Medicine, the first and still only uncensored medical show in the history of broadcast radio, now a podcast. I'm Dr. Steve with my little pal, Dr. Scott, traditional Chinese medical practitioner who keeps the alternative medicine wackos at bay. Hello, Dr. Scott. Hey, Dr. Steve. This is a show for people who would never listen to a medical show on the radio or the internet. If you've got a question you're embarrassed to take to your regular medical provider, if you can't find an answer anywhere else, give us a call at 347-766-4323. That's 347 347- Head. If you're listening to us live, the number is 754-227-3647. Follow us on Twitter at Weird Medicine, at Dr. Scott WM, and if Lady Diagnosis ever comes back, you can follow her, too. <laughs> uh, visit our website at uh, drsteve.com for podcast medical news and stuff you can buy, or go to our merchandise store at cafepress.com slash weirdmedicine. Most importantly, we are not your medical providers. Take everything you hear with a grain of salt. Don't act on anything you hear on the show without talking it over with your doctor, nurse practitioner, physician assistant, pharmacist, chiropractor, acupuncturist, yoga master, physical therapist, clinical laboratory scientist, registered dietitian, rock star, or whatever. All right, very good. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> it's longer all the time. Yes. Um, don't it. forget to check out stuff.drsteve.com. That's stuff.drsteve.com. The holidays are coming. If you go there, everything we've ever talked about on the show that you could buy, uh, say, at Amazon will be there. Just scroll down. Or you can just click through. Mm-hmm. And just clicking through um, is advantageous. So it doesn't cost you anything. It helps helps us out a lot. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you're going to do some holiday shopping, start at stuff.drsteve.com. Uh, best stocking stuffers in the world are earbuds, in my opinion, so that you can listen to Weird Medicine on the Weird Medicine app on the uh, uh, Apple uh, App Store or uh, Google Play. TweakedAudio.com. Offer code FLUID for 33% off the best earbuds for the price on the market and the best customer service anywhere. You, If you go right buy a set of earbuds at, C, well, at some place, some... Um, or uh, drugstore that rhymes with BPS, <laughs> <coughs> and they break, you're pretty much out of luck. But if the you, the tweaked audio ones uh, break or the thing comes off or they don't work or whatever, just call. You can tweet to them or you can email them. You can probably call them. You just go to their website at tweakedaudio.com. They will most of the time take care of you as long as you didn't just do something stupid. Don't use your earbuds as anal beads. That'd be one. Yeah, that yeah. Probably wouldn't be covered. Void, that voids your. Although I wouldn't be surprised. Thing. Tweaked audio is awesome, but I'm not going to commit that they will. They will um, pay. You know, give you a new your set warranty. of earbuds <laughs> that if yours are clogged with fecal matter because you used them as a sex toy. So don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. If you want to idea uh, to uh, attain your ideal body weight, though, do it with me. Do Noom. Do Noom dot dot com. If you do Noom dot drsteve.com you get two weeks free plus you get a counselor and you get to the the a- access to the app the only thing you don't get if you don't event- eventually sign up for it is your group and your group counselor and you can't finish the full three month thing but two weeks is plenty of time to see if it's going to be for you sure it's absolutely. not for everybody obviously mm-hmm. but i have had such wonderful luck with that yeah you've done great and my counselor is so good when i kind of backslid over vacation and i had a hard time getting it back off because i'm on steroids she hung in there with me mm-hmm. she's like you know what goals do we need to identify for this week let's do baby steps and i'm back in on you're in, fight, you're in fighting shape yeah, now. I'm doing great. Looking so, good. Noom.drsteve.com. And if you're lazy, as I am, I know Dr. Scott is. Profoundly. Uh, you can, And even if you're a vegetarian like Dr. Scott, who's really a pescatarian, yeah. so he's a – Dr. Scott is a bullshit vegan is right. what he is. Right, right. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an occasional vegan. Yeah. 
Yes. That would right. Be... A dilettante would be the other term for that. Yes. Um, but anyway. A selective he vegan. He likes to feel good about <laughs> himself, but not always. I've seen him m- mowing down on oh, a big old have, uh, meat sandwich before, uh, too. Uh, and I was yes. like, what the hell yeah, are you doing? I was hungry. Uh, so check out, if you're really lazy, check out freshly.drsteve.com. For four, uh, if you go to freshly.drsteve.com, you'll get $40 off. Uh, They deliver fresh prepared meals that make eating right super easy. You can use my link to get six dinners for $39 for two weeks. That's 20 bucks off each week. Give it a try. Let me know what you think. If you don't like it, tell them to hell with them. Uh, We (laughs) get it every week. And I'll tell you what, we had a problem this last week. First time we've had a problem, our shipment just didn't show up. It got stuck in Ohio. I didn't think they were having, like, California-grade wildfires but mm-hmm. maybe they were i don't know what happened but it didn't show up they were awesome not only did they replace them and we got them today and they sent them overnight uh they refunded our cost and we didn't pay for these either just hmm. for the inconvenience they're really good to work with so check out freshly.drsteve.com um uh it, we compared this to like lean cuisines or you know, other things like that that you can buy in the grocery store. These are far superior. It's handmade, right? You know, rather than machine made. Whatever those other, you know, whatever. Forget that I just, mentioned just, just any specific better. thing, but uh, prepared right. things that you put in the microwave. Uh, I I find these to be much better. Uh, and if you want archives of this show, I've got a new way to do it. So there's premium.drsteve.com. If you want to go and just listen to Dr. Scott's singing, Ooh. the first time he ever sang, and GVAC and I were both cringing, and you can go to premium.drsteve.com, get premium access for a buck ninety nine. Use offer code FLUID. You get it for a buck for three months. And then you can go back and listen to the show called Semi Sweet Melissa. <laughs> See, I'm using that to sell our show, Doctor Scott. So right that's on, a good thing. Right on. It's worth it. It's worth the money. You can hear when one of the maybe the most cringiest thing, and it's I can only say that now because he doesn't sound like that anymore. And we're going to prove it today. We're going to do a, a song that was a request from some. Is she a listener? Yeah, she's a listener, podcast listener down in. And down she in contacted Georgia. you and yeah. not me. Yeah, she. Well, she did because she Whatever. thinks I'm cute. You know, you what know how that is. F ever. Okay. Um, no, she actually bought some <laughs> some stress less. Yeah. All right, she went whatever. to Simply Herbals and got okay. her some stuff. Oh, and, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so you're out of nasal spray, though, right? We are right now. Yeah, it should be in this, hopefully, next week. I've had people complaining to me. Uh, no. Oh, really? So it'll be in next week? Yeah, it should be. Because you're... We'll a, have an update on your the Your assistant mm-hmm. yeah. told me, oh, no, we can't get it anymore. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what? It's peppermint. No, no. Well, we're, and saline. Yeah, we're gonna. We about, we've you need almost to tell her, she needs to. It's, okay, anyway, you know right, she whatever. Is. No, she, I don't. She's nuts. Okay, <laughs> but she tells me wrong things. Anyway, <laughs> and, and if she's telling other people wrong things that you're trying to buy stuff and they go somewhere else, when all they got to do know. is wait a week. Right. By the week. time they hear this, it'll be a week away. Right. Yeah, yeah that'd be about right. Okay. All yeah. right. Yeah. So check, and that's at simplyherbals.net. dot net. Right on. And uh, uh, we're oh so. I loaded all of these shows up on Dropbox. So I've got the Dropbox Pro. Yeah. So I have two terabytes of Dropbox. Hmm. So if you, rather than sending me $30 and getting a thumb drive, because I did this because this guy from Saudi Arabia, uh, uh, you know, he sent us the 30 bucks and I'm packaging his thing up. And then uh, I noticed, oh gosh, this guy's in Saudi. How much is this going to cost? The shipping was 60. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Just to ship this little envelope with a thumb drive in. I said, dude, I'm going to refund your money. I'm going to put it up on my Dropbox. Mm-hmm. If you have Dropbox, then uh, for 20 bucks, you can just have access to that folder, and it's got everything in it. Right so on. I will put that up on the website before tonight. So you'll have two alternatives. You can do 30 and get a, a thumb drive. Mm-hmm. Ship to your door, or you can do twenty. Maybe it'll be twenty five. I don't know. It's worth ten times that. But anyway, right. for twenty bucks, you can get access to the uh, uh, Dropbox for like ten days or something. So you can just download it all. Mm-hmm. All right, because I don't want to have a hundred people that have access to that one folder. I, it seems like that would be a problem with Dropbox. I don't know. Maybe not. Mm-hmm. If there's a Dropbox expert out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, because that way I could just keep adding to it. But anyway, um, do that. Uh, we're nine minutes in and haven't taken a single phone call yet. I mean, I'm sure it's been very entertaining. But <laughs> <laughs> first, though, we need to address our missing partner. 
He was be. sick last week, and yeah. they were in the emergency room yesterday. Oh, no. Which, uh-oh, wait a minute. He just texted me, and he texted me, lazy-ass mangers. I think he means managers. Okay, uh, he's at work. It says, don't think I'm going to make it. They won't let me effing leave. <laughs> and then he puts, lazy-ass mangers. <laughs> so that's the... Close. The rock star. <laughs> okay, so he was sick last week and couldn't make it. Now, he's new to the show. Yes. You, know, you think, well, he, you know. He'd he tough it out. You show up. He'd tough it out. He would show up. But then they were in the emergency room last night. Oh, no. He was or she was? I, they were. Who knows? <laughs> so I'm sure we'll find I've, out, I've though. been dying to, so we can still play his theme music. Yes. Because it's, it applies. So this, um, this is Dr. Scott and uh, Cody Gilmer from Indie Ghost. Um, our newest member of our little family, uh, his theme music. Born with a deviated septal heart Had my first hemorrhoid before I could fart Had every ailment from herpes to VD And my prostate exam made me have to be Cody You're listening to Weird Medicine with... You're listening. <laughs> I tell you. There you go. That's good stuff. I hit about ten wrong buttons in there. Very technically uh, challenged. <laughs> Jeez, so we've been doing this 15 years. That's right. Hey, that still can't get it right. That's got to win some kind of... You know, I thought, though, after every time he comes, he's got something different. So we've got, we we had to... I know. That's great. Yeah, that was that was so funny. Last time he was here, we were like, well, what's wrong with you this time? And he's like, well, this week, Dr. Steve, as if he had prepared a topic. <laughs> Hilarious. It is pretty good. Because he actually had something. Yeah. Anyway, uh, check out Dr. Scott's website. It's simply herbals.net. Simply herbals.net. If you don't... If you're challenged in the uh, old spelling... Uh, department. Uh, it's like simply herballs.net with only one L. And uh, check us out at drsteve.com. You can check out our podcast there and some other stuff like that. And uh, there you go. So a um, uh, couple of things. Wait a minute. Now, you, you're you going to music camp yep. next week. Yep. Going to band camp. Fired up. So we were talking the other day and um, why we started doing music on the show. And it was really we're, because GVAC was a, a wonderful musician yes and he and i would play and then scott would just sit there and go well you know what am i supposed to do so he started singing yes and uh, or, strike one <clears throat> <laughs> we really need to play <laughs> maybe in the future we, let me we, we, we've got to work a couple more times on getting that song dialed in okay because scott that's yeah. the one way i can get him to leave the room is yes. to play his first time singing on this show, which was a song by the Allman Brothers called, uh, it's actually not called Sweet Melissa, no, it's right? it's called Melissa, yeah. It's just called Melissa. Yep. And, uh, but anyway, Scott was... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jimmy Mack and I both were like, dude, you have this great speaking voice. I mean, listen to this guy. His, I'm supposed to be the radio guy, but Scott's got the voice. And, and then when he would sing, he would go like this. That was ha- horrible. Howdy do ya. Oh, God, terrible. It was not good. It was horrible. And so GVAC, uh, uh, more GVAC than me, but to a lesser extent me because I was around, started working with Scott because he really wanted to play music. Yeah. So for a while there, he was just a guy that owned a mandolin. Now mm-hmm. he's taking lessons and he's going to some damn, you know. Music camp. Music, advanced yeah. music camp. And yep. he's actually, you know, almost a musician at this point. I'm working on it. I'm not horrible anymore. I'm just bad. And I bought him voice lessons <laughs> and it's better. But you it, can helped. St- it, yes. helped bit, yeah, it helped. Yes. It helped a little bit. It helped a little bit. And maybe in the future when I'm not here one weekend, y'all can play this. The old, the old semi sweet. No, I would have to se- be here. <laughs> the semi sweet. Look, <laughs> if you want to hear it, it, this is worth it. You go to <laughs> premium.drsteve.com, and uh, I think it's like a buck ninety nine. But use the offer code fluid f l u i d, and you get it for a buck, and then just for a dollar, and then cancel it <laughs> if you don't want it. Yeah, but go back and listen to the show called Semi Sweet <laughs> Melissa. <laughs> it was. A- Oh man! That's the only thing that I can get Scott to just walk. That's right. I can walk the room. Uh, is if he um... <laughs> Gvac Gvac used to look at me like what? He's in like, the what the hell, hell are, are you doing? doing? 
and he'd be just sitting there playing. Yeah. And but anyway, uh, so we continued it once Gvac died. Mm-hmm. We decided we were going to continue to play, but kind of in his memory. So every time yep. we play in this studio, we think of him absolutely, and we know that he's laughing and at miss Scott. him terribly. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Wishes he was. I wish he was here to play some really loud guitar over my voice. That's true. That's what I wish. Yeah. Improper use of the subjunctive clause, but we are a case. But we knew what you meant. Yes. All right. Um, you want to take some phone calls? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Number one thing: don't take advice from some asshole on the radio. Okay. Fair enough. I think that's a fair thing to say. And uh, we still have our co-host. When you guys weren't here, I had my co-host. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you had that thing? Uh, this one we've years? had about 10 years, no, but then we've got three other ones. Okay. So we put them all out when these kids come up, all three, of, all four of these um, skulls, these screaming skulls just start laughing at them. It's pretty funny. Anyway, all right. Uh, let's see what we got here. Dr. Steve. Yeah. Uh, we've got this new janitor at work, and he puts these chemicals in the urinal in the toilets and stuff and i guess he scrubs it down but um he doesn't flush it so when i go in there and take a leak and uh all i get is these noxious fumes that come up and it's, it's kind of overwhelming and I, I don't know what it you know what in the urine can cause that but the urine. Uh, i just wondering if, if this is bad or if i should have a talk with him and uh just wondering how bad it is well, okay, yeah, no, it's a great question, and uh, thanks for calling in. Um, the American Lung Association says that a lot of cleaning supplies or household products can irritate the eyes and throat, cause headaches and other health problems, including cancer. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Uh, some products release dangerous chemicals, including volatile organic compounds. Other harmful ingredients include ammonia and bleach. And by the way, don't ever uh, mix ammonia and bleach. No. Because that releases c- deadly chlorine gas, which I almost killed myself with when I was in seventh grade, just farting around, mixing chemicals together with no... You know, they used to give you these chemistry sets, and mm-hmm. I used to just mix everything together. Mm-hmm. You know, you're supposed happened, to yeah. do experiments sure. with them, but it was like, F this thing. I'd throw the manual away yeah. and just mix everything together and see what would happen. Oof. And then I start mixing household chemicals together, okay. and my mom had bleach and ammonia, and it fizzes up, you know, right. and it uh, releases from the so, – so bleach is sodium hypochlorite. And I'm not 100% sure what the reaction is. I, yeah, I was an organic chemist before I went to medical school, so I should know. Um, well, hell, let's look it up. Yeah. Um, let's, the, the chemical reaction of bleach and ammonia. There we go. <clears throat> so, But it releases elemental chlorine. Okay. And elemental chlorine is like... Um, uh, what they used in World War One to to scar people's lungs in the mm-hmm. trenches. Don't I think so? They're using some of those in some of the chemical warfare now, aren't they? The chemi- the um, yeah, okay, uh, elemental chlorine. Yeah, it turns out okay. So it's not elemental chlorine; it's chloramine fumes. So that makes more sense. So what happens is the uh, chlorine ions from the uh, hydro um, the hypochloric sodium hypochlorite uh, uh, decompose to hydrochloric acid and that reacts with ammonia to make um, to take one of the hydrogens off the ammonia and attach a chlorine to it okay. and then that makes chloramine fumes and um, that's not good and the chloramine is a vapor and it's very toxic to the lungs mm-hmm. so yeah that's interesting well how about that I always thought, well, I know what uh, elemental chlorine smells like because I remember getting that, but it really just um, sticks in your um, throat and mm-hmm. in your upper in your mucous membranes. It stings like crazy, and it's not fun to breathe. No. I remember running out of that uh, basement pretty damn quickly because it filled up with this stuff. So, Ugh. Yeah, it was not good. So anyway, um, now, in the workplace, mm-hmm. these chemicals are supposed to be vetted, and they should have a um, a uh, an OSHA 
sheet mm-hmm. on all these chemicals that say what they can do. Material and what... safety data sheet. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. There you yeah. go. All That's right. right. All right. You're going to get one of these. Yep. I wasn't going to go Give so... Give yourself um... a bill. I wasn't going to go so deep, but yeah, ask for the material safety data sheet on mm-hmm. the things that they're using. Some of them may be totally non-toxic. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is, you can flush. Yeah. If he isn't flushing and you want to piss because First. it's, it's yeah. not the urine that's reacting with it. The urine is just causing it to splash up and right. aerate, and then it's becoming uh, you know, a vapor and you're inhaling it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as for that... Um, uh, MSDS. M- thank you. Yeah. MSDS. Just say, hey... Br- Dude, can I have the MSDS on those cleaning supplies? And they'll have to supply you with it. Yeah, they do. And uh, if they don't, for whatever reason, have them, because, I mean, we violated OSHA up one down, one side and down the other when we first opened the beer store. Now that it's mm. closed, I can say that. <laughs> but um, uh, if they don't have it, at least just get the bottle, look at the stuff, and then you can look up the, uh, the uh, safety sheet on mm. all of those chemicals. And see, now... If they're using something that's a known carcinogen, you can lobby your employer to say, well, they need to get something else because mm-hmm. there are non-toxic cleaners as well. Sure. Make sure that he is using one that's approved and not just one yep. he went over to the that's to, right. to the to the local store and purchased yep. for 99 cents yep. a gallon, you know. Uh, let me see. Um, there's nothing else. But, yeah, if you come up to a urinal and it's full of blue liquid, just flush it. Mm-hmm. You know, step away and flush it. Same thing with the toilet. Uh, go ahead and flush it, and then uh, then you're pissing into clear, crystal clear water. Mm-hmm. Those little um, uh, urinal cakes, let's look at urinal cake toxicity. So urinal cake. Okay. You'd think that I didn't know what these... Um, calls were but then i you know i get distracted i start thinking of something i didn't think of before <laughs> and it says you really shouldn't snack on urinal cakes okay well really uh there's okay. probably some people that the women who are listening don't know what the hell up we're talking about no but it's uh they throw it in the uh, urinal to uh, uh, take care of the smell mostly because most urinals don't fully um fill up with water and and which is smart. You don't want to waste water flushing water, what is 99.9% water down the toilet, hmm. you know. Um, you So these things, they don't fill up with water completely, so they don't have a gas trap that's like a toilet does. And, you know, a toilet is full of water, and so that keeps the gas from the pipes that's full of fecal matter and urine and stuff from, you know, those fumes leaking back into the environment. Yeah, those but traps. A ur- a, that's yeah. right. A urinal doesn't really have that. Uh, a lot of them don't anyway. Yeah. And the ones that do shouldn't because you really, again, don't want to waste water yeah. flushing water into the sewage system. Just right. let gravity do it. Yeah. But anyway, so then they put these urinal cakes in there just to mask the smell. That's mm-hmm. what that's for. So... Um, the ingredient in most urinal cakes. Okay, here's one for you to look up, Dr. Okay. Scott. Look up the safety of para, P-A-R-A, dichlorobenzene. So uh, benzene now in its just raw form is one of those things we worry about in organic labs. If we get these benzene compounds or benzene molecules uh, where we've attached things that, you know, whether they cause lymphoma or not. But... Um, let me see. Um, for those who want to get a whiff of it but aren't willing to stick their head in a urinal to do so, it's a substance also found in mothballs. Mothballs <clears throat> tend to either contain paradichlorobenzene or naphthalene. Regular mothball smell is naphthalene. And it says naphthalene is more deadly when eaten. Dang. Mm-hmm. That's not to say paradichlorobenzene is a walk in the park. Anyone boneheaded enough to snack on a urinal? Ca- well, why would you? First, it's covered in piss. Okay, so let's say they take it out of the package. <laughs> Ooh, this looks tasty. Or it's a, um, you know, it's a zombie apocalypse, and it, all you know is it just says cake on it. And so you open it up and take a bite. They can look forward to dizziness, nausea, and diarrhea at the very least. The ingredient is carcinogenic to animals, though no human studies have been done. What'd you find? It is. There's a. There is a. Um since it is a, a form of um, chlorine, it is toxic. And it's also found in mothballs. 
Right. Yep. I just, yeah, yes, very good. Yeah. I, it's, Give uh, yourself a bill. I, I just literally just said that. <laughs> I know. I know. I was trying to read That's the, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. the, the um, toxic levels. But of naphthalene it. is the main ingredient in mothballs, but I guess there are some mothballs that have this stuff. So what mm-hmm. did it say about the safety? Oh, it just said don't eat it. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Jesus, great. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I'm just reading you what. No, I know. I know. Yeah. yeah. They said don't, don't ingest it in any way. It says prolonged exposure may have nasty effects on right. the central nervous system, stuff it's like neurotoxic, that. neurotoxic. So. so so, but now that's what prolonged exposure does when you eat it. What does it do in a urinal? Uh, any object uh, which urine is regularly dispo- deposited will be populated by urine eating bacteria when left to their own devices. These bacteria put out ammonia, which contributes to a lot of the smell that stale urine gives off. Paradichlorobenzene doesn't kill all the bacteria, but it does re- disrupt the ability of these bacteria to produce ammonia. Well, isn't that interesting? That's a good thing because ammonia hmm. and paradichlorobenzene don't mix well. According to an old scientific journal, heating paradichlorobenzene with ammonia and copper salts makes paraphenylene diamine. This substance was used in the 1920s in processing of rubber. It was con- considered extremely poisonous. Today we use it in a hair dye, though we suspect it still might be dangerously poisonous and lead to renal and respiratory failure. Well, a lot of this has to do with the context, the dose. Is it cumulative? How are you taking it? Mm-hmm. You know, a skin absorption will be totally different than absorption from the GI tract. Mm-hmm. Just don't eat stuff that isn't labeled don't food. Don't lick it. But anyway, alone. so um, you can look up... Uh, the safety of the materials that they're using and uh, that's very difficult for me to say now one thing i'm interested in is is there any toxicity uh in those urinal so uh, i haven't seen the urinal cake so many so 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 often recently but i have been seeing these rubber things almost that mats, smell almost yeah those, yeah those little rubber looking mat things so um, let's see what's in those damn things i've always been wondering that's got to be that. the same thing you think i would think Okay, Bella Matt. Okay, let me see. Uh, the green smart technology treated with a non-toxic. Oh, and then uh, now I've got to click on it to get there. Uh, non-toxic antimicrobial agent with a health rating of one. Custom-made disposable antimicrobial urinal floor mats. Oh, this is a urinal floor mat. I want the urinal mat. Hmm. Uh, let's see here. Urinal urinal deodorizer block. Well, shit. Okay, is there a safe alternative to channel blocks and urinal cake? So, oh, authorities in New York have apparently, let me see here. Ah, shit. Sorry, everybody. I, I thought I had something interesting. Squirrel. Dr. Yeah. Steve saw the squirrel. Well, I, you know, that's right. You could be helping me look this fucking shit up. You no, know? hell, because the time, then you'll say something I won't hear it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll, I'll say something similar. It's like, oh shit. Okay, man. here's some urinal urinal screens. There you go. Odor That's absorbers. A... Okay, we look that one up. Right, urinal, I got you. I'm on. I'm on. So it. urinal screen, cucumber gotcha. melon fragrance, anti splash urinal screen. That's the other thing. These things are flexible and they just throw them in there and they've got little holes in them and what happens in when you piss on these it will disperse the urine the um the force of the urine flow and deflect it in a bunch of different directions so it doesn't just splash back at you because if you're pissing against a piece of porcelain it's just going to splash back so look up the cucumber melon fragrance anti-splash urinal screen and then just put toxicity <clears throat> i'm working on it Hey, okay. you can buy these on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah, you can go to stuff. Oh, my God. Dr. There's Steve. a thousand com. of these damn and things. Would, <laughs> Holy for, shit. I don't, don't look at it on Amazon, though. They're not going to tell no, you No, but I want to know how much they are. Oh, for God's <laughs> sake. All right. All right, hang Dr. on. I'm, work, I'm working on a squirrel. I got a squirrel now. Okay, if you uh, look on. that up, and when you come back to it, I'll play this one. Gotcha. Hey, Dr. Steve. Jesse in Phoenix. Hey, man. Uh, you had uh, mentioned about a Prince Albert uh, piercing and what do the women think of it? Yes, okay. So we were discussing penile piercings and uh, there are some that go uh, through the glands and come out the urethra, the urethral meatus, which by the way is spelled meatus and that's hilarious, but it's meatus, a.k.a. the cock hole. And I was just wondering, what in the world do women think about this? Because I got to be honest with you, I'm not, although... I, I can't say from personal experience because this happened since I was on the market, but I have not 
been a huge fan of nipple piercings. First, it looks like it hurt when it went in. I don't want anything to ever hurt a, a, a female nipple. Uh, just, you know, because I think they're awesome. But also, I don't want that thing clinking around on my teeth when I'm down there licking, uh, you know, licking a, a tit. And maybe that's why they're there. So, you know, keep your stupid <laughs> stupid mouth off my nipple, you know, because you're not, you're not um, eight months old. Maybe that's what it is. But, uh, you know, just having that thing clinking around on my teeth doesn't seem appealing to me. But I've never been with anybody, so it might be a huge turnoff. I have an open mind. I just know what I what my experience is, and I've not been experienced with that, and it's not a real turn on to see it. So I wanted to know what uh, women think of these penile piercings, particularly like double vasectomy turd had a series of rings over the dorsum of his shaft. And he used mm-hmm. to talk about when he was driving and he'd wear that stupid kilt and he'd reach up there and just be playing around with his rings while he's driving. It's like... I, that that image just makes me physically ill. What you know? What I was going to say is, I would think the, I mean, the I, nipple rings are probably for the person that has the piercing. Well, maybe. Yeah, I, I would think. Okay, they get stimulation when when maybe their shirt or bra or touches it or something. Oh, well, maybe. maybe tickles. Well, and women that know. have it, call in know. and let us know why what the deal yeah, is. Because I don't know either. I'm like yeah. you. To me, they seem like they would be obstructive, but yeah, maybe they, maybe they tickle. Well, if it's for their pleasure, it's like you know. I it's mean, different. Seriously, who cares? Yeah, no, different. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not there to pleasure you. That's not right. our job. A girlfriend thought it was the sexiest thing in the world. My wife is worried that it's going to pull out her IUD. <laughs> there you go. There you uh, go. It's all about the context, isn't it? <laughs> so it's all relative. When I'm with the girlfriend, it's in. When I'm with the wife, it's out. Ooh. Give up the good work. Okay. Hope that was okay to play on the air. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, I I think maybe it's just a little naughty. And so when you're in a situation that's already a little naughty, it just makes it a little naughtier. All right. Cool. Well, thank you for that. I'm very interested in that. You want to hear it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I found the material safety data sheet for the cucumber melon. Yeah. Z screen deodorizing urinal thing yes so it is it is considered harmful if swallowed causes skin irritation <laughs> these things are about six inches to eight oh. inches around so who somebody cramming that thing in their gullet would be uh have a more problems more, than that m- more issues than just the yeah. toxicity of it may cause allergic skin reactions suspected of causing cancer okay and but Okay, that's if ingested, which nobody's going to do. Right, and at, the, and at the, the very end, the conclusion is is that there's, um, it's, it's not been determined if it's a health hazard or if it's flammable or anything like that. Just because it's, you know, it's like a lot of other things, it's not going. Yeah, they're not. They're going to make you money. They're going to make you money on it. So, yeah. okay. bottom line is, it is, it is, it can cause toxicity to the skin. Yep. Certainly, mucous membranes, as as you can imagine. But his concern was the, the fumes. The, the fumes, right? Didn't and so we don't have any evidence that no. it does. But still, if you're smelling it and it smells like chemicals, never hurts to just. You know, if flushing it would make it go away, just flush it. Well, it does say it does say if exposed, get into a, a clean air space. Yeah, on here, so which makes sense. Right. Well, that's true of any odor men's bathroom. Yes. Hold your breath, boys. <laughs> get in a damn clean do space your, as soon as you can. Do your business. We get out. Nasty. All right. Today's episode is brought to you by Angie. Angie has made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your jobs and projects done well. Let me tell you, there's the version of it where you try to do something at home, and then there's a version of it where you have someone help you, you watch them do it the right way, and you go, thank God I didn't try to do that myself. I have fully done things around the home that I think look good, and then a bang in the night, and I wake up to a shelf collapsing, a painting falling off the wall. Like it, I've, I've seen it all go south. I own a home, and I can tell you... I know how much work it can take. Whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality, it can be hard just to know where to start. But now all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise you need. Whatever your home project, big or small, indoor or outdoor, you can Angie that and connect with skilled professionals to get the project done well. Right now, one of my wish lists is I want a bike for my condo in Milwaukee and I would love to rig it up on a pulley in the ceiling because I have one of those like lofted ceilings. 
but I'm so scared to try that on my own. Angie has 20 years of home experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly, which means you can take care of any home project in just a few taps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. All right. Hey, Dr. Steve. It's hey, Brian from New Hampshire. Hey, Brian. Just wanted to weigh in on how ridiculous the opiate crisis is. Okay. My wife was in a coma on propofol and uh, oh, geez. fentanyl for a month and a half. And then rehab for a couple weeks. And then when I went to go get her 20 Vicod, uh, Percocet 5, Walmart said they would only give her 7, and I would have to forfeit the other 13. Okay, some states have laws about this. Let me uh, let him finish his call, and then we'll talk about that. She woke up from thyroid cancer complications with drop foot, so it's hot enough to get her in out of the house. Yeah. So I thought it was pretty ridiculous. They said, oh, she doesn't have a, a history of drugs. I'm like, she's in a coma for a month and a half on drugs. Yeah, I don't know the what the coma thing is. If she was on, if she was in the ICU, they'll use fentanyl to uh, do a chemically induced coma. It's basically they're sedating people just really to pass the time because if you're on a... If you've got a tube shoved down your throat and you're on a respirator, uh, you know, a minute will seem like an hour. So if you, you're on there for two weeks, it can seem interminable and really can cause all kinds of uh, psychic trauma. So uh, they will um, use fentanyl. Sometimes they'll use um, a benzodiazepine drug called Versed uh, for, um, for the same for the same reason. Uh, there are other things that they can use, including propofol. Propofol is the Michael Jackson's magic milk. Mm-hmm. And when done properly, it's a great sedative, and it'll keep you under. And uh, it can, uh, fentanyl and propofol, both are fat-soluble, so they will accumulate in the system. Mm-hmm. So you may have some, the longer you're on it, uh, some uh, cognitive difficulties. You know, mm-hmm. it might make you a little foggy for a while. Sure. But um, it's for me, if I'm going to be on the ventilator, I'd much rather wake up and say, hey, it's two weeks later than have to lay there for two weeks just thinking, when am I ever going to get out of here? Because yeah, no I'll tell you what, man, when I I had a a um, an MRI on my finger and I thought I'd just sit in a chair and put my hand in the MRI. No, you get in the whole damn thing yeah. on your hands and knees. But that, that tube isn't big enough for you to be on your hands and knees. So you're just kind of laying on your elbows and you can't move. And it hurts. The pain is in, interminable. They've got to have a better way to do this. And uh, you can't move. And it's 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it, I, I, at the you know, about minute 30, mm-hmm. I was praying to God, look, if you get me out of this, you know, I'll I'll make you any deal you want. Mm-hmm. You know, I you know how those things are. I've sure. held that up best I could for as long as I could sustain <laughs> it. But you know, it was awful. So I can't imagine being on a ventilator mm-hmm. for a, you know two weeks or a month without having some sedation. So I'm assuming that's what he's talking about. Right. But she wasn't in a coma because she did it. Mm-hmm. She got really really sick, and they had to sedate her uh, while she was on life support. So then she gets out of the hospital. And they go to fill, they gave them a prescription for 20 Percocet, and they would only give her a couple, you know. Or, you know, seven out of 20. Yeah, yeah, right. They only give them seven, right? Now, there, it, there are some states, and Tennessee is one of them, that have rules about this. Mm-hmm. That you can't just send somebody out of the hospital with a big old prescription for a peanut jar full of, you know, oxycodone whatever, sure. or whatever. <clears throat> but for... If I heard him right, she has stage four cancer. Almost that all right, of yeah. those yeah. states have exemptions for people who are undergoing cancer treatment or are in hospice or something like that. So I have a funny feeling that this prescription was filled out incorrectly. Like in Tennessee, if you have if you want to write somebody a ninety or a thirty day supply of medication that otherwise you could only write a three day supply for or a 
10-day supply with half of it up front and then half. There's all kinds of different rules. Okay. All you have to do is write exempt and then why. So in Tennessee, we would write exempt uh, cancer treatment. And then that person can get any whatever they need. Now, their insurance still may not pay for it, but as far as the pharmacy filling it, there's no issue. But if you leave that word exempt off of there, the pharmacy can't fill it. The most they can give them is a three-day supply. Hmm. So I have a funny feeling that this is what happened here, that there was some rule, and the hospitalist or the critical care doctor who sent her out either didn't know or didn't care to uh, how to follow those rules to get her what she needed. What they should have done was said, look, I'm going to give you a three-day supply, and um, I'm making you an appointment with a palliative medicine provider or the oncologist so that they can fill this out because they know how to do these things. Right. If they had just told them that, they wouldn't have this problem. Yeah. So uh, I suspect that's what is what the what she needs to do uh, to prevent this kind of issue in the future if she's pursuing treatment is to ask the oncologist to refer her to a palliative medicine specialist. Palliative medicine specialists deal with pain, they deal with symptom management of all kinds, and they deal with medical decision-making with people that have advanced illnesses that are not responsive to curative treatment. And almost uh, all the cancer centers now have access to somebody. If they don't, they, they have to be doing it themselves, and that means that the oncologists themselves should be able to do this for you. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, don't just lay down and take it when, particularly when, if you've got, if I heard right and she's got stage four cancer and God bless her and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we've got new crap coming out all the time. So the, her, her job right now is to kick that can as far down the road as she can because yeah. we are getting closer and closer to a, a truly generalizable treatment for cancer that will be very effective. Mm-hmm. But we're not quite there yet on mm-hmm. some of these. Some mm-hmm. of them we are. Early detection always being the key. So. Yeah. Look, if you're a woman listening to this, and that's unlikely, but if, you know, it's <laughs> possible. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. Uh, and you haven't gotten your pap smear and you're overdue, go get it. Um, if uh, you are at risk for colon cancer and you've been putting off that colonoscopy, don't. Go C- get it. Call it's right now and do it. Yeah. Um, Actually, kind of feels good to get all cleaned out, doesn't it? Does. It does, yeah. yeah. It feels really You're a little it, light yeah. on your feet for yeah. a while. Yep. Um, until you fill it back up with burgers and like, stuff. Get all that shit out of Speaking you. Speaking of burgers, by the way, I tweeted out a picture, and it wasn't. It's really hard to take a picture of food, but a picture uh, today of um, the meatballs I made with. Oh, we oh. you know who that is. Wow, what a coincidence! What a, what a shock! What a shock! Tacy, you're on weird medicine. <laughs> Just hangs up. <laughs> <clears throat> um, How long have we been doing this? I mean, I, it's every time. And then she's, oh, it's just a... Well, what day is today? Again? Really what it is is that's how much she calls me all day long. Um, it's fine. Wow. I love her. So she can call me any time she wants to. But uh, uh, it does really seem like she it concentrates on show time. But really what it is is she calls me at least 10 yeah. times a day. And so, you know, yeah. just by chance it's going to happen. Yeah. But anyway, I made some uh, bur- uh, burgers for the boys okay. and uh, some meatballs for Tacey. I just, you know, I'm an amateur chef, so I just improvi- improvised mm. with what I had I um, with Beyond Meat. Love it. It was actually pretty damn good. Love it. Now, I'm really, I've thought when I saw it as raw meat in the meat section. Yep which I can't wait till the meat people start freaking out about that because in Wisconsin, Mm -hmm. back in the day, you could not sell margarine in the same place where you sold butter. As a matter of fact, you couldn't color margarine yellow. They would, it it came in this tub and it was white and you had to take this capsule of yellow food dye and mix it up in it if you wanted it to be yellow. I didn't know that. Because, well, because the dairy guys were freaking out about margarine. Right. So, um, the meat guys, the the meat lobby, they're going to do something sure. to keep this out of the meat section. Unless in 2019 we've got enough rationality that we're, we're we realize people aren't stupid. They know what's meat and what isn't. There, I'm seeking this stuff out. Yeah. So uh, the Beyond Meat is uh, pea protein, mm-hmm. and I think coconut oil mm-hmm. and some some other stuff. But it's not. It's limited ingredients. Yeah. But it really. It, 
you know, if you don't look too closely, it really looks like ground beef in the package. Yes, and when is. you work it, it's like ground beef. Mm -hmm. And so I threw some uh, feta cheese, some uh, freshly grated Parmesan cheese, salt and pepper, garlic, and uh, oh, some oregano and some thyme. Mixed it, you know, mixed it together. Oh, and uh, egg whites. Mm -hmm. I had some egg whites. I didn't have eggs, but I had egg whites. It was fine. Mm -hmm. And uh, some egg white, threw it in there. The egg white, of course, doesn't make it vegan. Mm hmm um well and the really the cheese it doesn't either no. right so um so, so you could pretty close though you could do it Hell, vegan, it was a plant-based but this was diet. not you know unless you consider egg whites meat it's just albumin it's just a protein but anyway mm. uh so uh and i mixed it all together made them into balls and and cooked them for about i don't know 15 20 minutes turning mm. them halfway and they were outstanding mm -hmm. and my kids ate those burgers and had no clue that it wasn't meat mm -hmm. I'm sure they thought they tasted kind of like, well, Dad doesn't really know how to make a burger because this isn't like what we get at Perkins. <laughs> but uh, it was uh, really quite good. So I'm really excited to try the Impossible Burger. Mm -hmm. And look, I'm not pushing it. I just, I'm interested in stuff like mm -hmm. this. You know, I always like trying new, different things. And uh, it's I'm not convinced in any way that this stuff is healthier for you mm -hmm. than eating a regular burger as mm -hmm. far as fat. Right. It certainly has more fiber in it. The mm -hmm. pea protein has got fiber in it. Mm -hmm. and um, When it has vegetables in it, which yeah. a hamburger does not. Oh, right, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Hey, right. let me, but you know, on that same thing, I, I did those Beyond Burger um, sausages. Okay. And the, they're, they're like, they look like the kielbasa kind of sausage. Okay, how was that? Chopped them up, and I made a spicy italian sausage with those things oh yeah so i just i had some spicy olive oil like a, when you say a spicy italian sausage you mean the uh, a sandwich no 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 for 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 spaghetti like a dish yeah, oh, yeah, oh, okay. yeah, for, oh, yeah okay. for spaghetti and um, so i i, I oh, chopped yeah. those things up and made a spicy italian sausage so i just had the, the um olive oil spicy olive oil with some um crushed red peppers in there yep. and threw them in there and sauteed them in yep. that man and you would you would not know the difference yeah we threw right? this in some marinara and you could put it on spaghetti or anything so i'm so telling you guys you know if you're it, looking for something else yeah. it the the frozen ones i don't know mm -hmm. but this came it was in the meat section yes. in a packet that yes. looked like meat yes and that was what i was really looking for and they had some pre-pattied ones too mm -hmm. and they patty up really nice mm -hmm. and it was actually really and, good and you know they put a little bit of beet juice in the middle of it so when you cut right. it, it beyond looks, uses yeah. beet juice yeah. yep looks lit, impossible like. uses uh soy um meth hemoglobin mm -hmm. and why in the hell soybeans have to make hemoglobin right what do they use it for they're not using it know. to carry oxygen no. at least i don't think they are hmm. um they have their own transport system in mm. the um uh in the stalks and leaves and yeah and the leaves yeah. and stuff you know chlorophyll and stuff yeah. to move oxygen around mm. and reduce and oxidize things to to uh uh glean energy from sunlight mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, there's hemoglobin in there. So, and then that's what makes them bleed. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. And that really, from what I hear, gives it a, a very meaty kind of smell mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. When you, you know, cause it's all, it's the whole thing. It's when the, you're eating right. a really good burger, it's the first thing is the visual. Yep. And then you get that smell and that mm. smell means it's going to taste good. Right. And when you see a Bobby Flay burger or, you know, one of those really, you know, nice, just thick gourmet burgers. Mm -hmm. And um, and then, you know, of course, there's the taste and yep. then the, the texture of it. Yeah. It's just it's just so much different than like a mushroom burger. Or something. The only thing it that doesn't you, look like a hamburger. Right, right, right. You know, doesn't right. Like and it doesn't really taste like, like one no, either. It's no. just kind of burger-esque. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, and then there's some hearing too because you know the crunch and all that stuff. So you, all right. five of your senses are involved in eating. Oh yeah, and uh, uh, and so you got to get all of that stuff. It's like the uncanny valley. You know, you know what I'm talking about. No, you ever seen that movie, um, uh, the North Pole movie? What the f, f was that thing? Mm. The one with Tom Hanks and it's animated, no. but it was CGI and uh, North. Polar Express or something. I can't remember what it is. It's a Christmas movie. <clears throat> but it was a good example oh, of the... Polar un Express. Polar Express. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. go look up... Just look up Uncanny Valley Polar Express and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. And everybody out there, if you don't know what I'm talking about, <clears throat> because the human eye is very tuned to seeing human faces. 
So if you draw a circle with two dots and a and a semicircle inside it, you will perceive that as a caricature of a face, even though there's no face in the world looks like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and this probably has some evolutionary advantage, particularly when we were infants looking up and seeing our parents. And we were very easy uh, to discern who was somebody we were supposed to be with and who we weren't. You know, which one was a saber-toothed tiger, in which case we were just going to get eaten if you were a human infant. But, um, you know, I guess that gave you some, I don't know, it gave you some uh, some uh, survival advantage somehow. Uh, but anyway, uh, we are so attuned to seeing faces, though, that when you make one that's close to a human face, but not quite, it uh, is disturbing. And that whole movie was disturbing mm-hmm. in, because they were so close to being right, but the human eye can tell minute differences that set them apart. So aliens that didn't know us very well, that tried to mask as us, we'd be able to spot them very easily because they would make subtle mistakes in their uh, creation of a human face that we would perceive as being false. Mm-hmm. They used this to their advantage in that movie, Alita Battle Angel, where she was supposed to look otherworldly. So they made her eyes just a little bit too big or maybe a lot too big and her mouth a little bit too small and her smile was kind of not human. And so, But it was close. She was cute, but you could tell she wasn't human. And that was on purpose because she was a, you know, she was a robot. Um, and so they, they skirted that uncanny valley. Well, anyway, mm-hmm. same thing with, with our food. Mm-hmm. There is an uncanny oh, valley yeah. with things I that are going, purporting yeah. to be meat. Mm-hmm. And some things will pass mustard <laughs> <laughs> and others will not. And uh, mushroom burgers, yeah, they're really in that. They're, they're the, sort of the Tom Hanks in Polar Express. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, now, if you're just eating it as a mushroom burger and not it's pretending good. that's right. meat, it's fine. Right. Right. Anyway, that's right. funny. All right. Not sure. I don't even remember how we got off on that. But I don't either. If I could get my hands on some impossible burger meat, I'll report back because I really want to do an A-B comparison. Mm-hmm. Okay. Question, I guess you could say. I know in the morning I get up. And I get ready to go, and I go out and do my fat boy waddle. I don't run, but I do waddle. <laughs> and I work up a good sweat and everything. But I don't smell that sweat. I don't smell body odor from that sweat. But end of the day, I go home after working out for an entire day and everything. And every once in a while, I just get a funky smell from my armpits. Now, I'm not sweating then, but does sweat itself smell? No. But it's an excellent question. Mm -hmm. And people who listened last week that paid attention to uh, the project that I did on the Howard Stern channel, the Germia staffer, will know the answer to this. There is a bacterium on the skin. Not It's not the only one. Mm -hmm. But there's a very common bacterium on the skin called Micrococcus and Micrococcus luteus. And there's a couple other species. And Micrococcus, one of the things that it does is it breaks down oils in sweat. Because sweat, the sweat itself is just water uh, and um, salt. But there are byproducts of human metabolism, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, hang on, I got to tell them, I'll call them back. There are byproducts of human metabolism that unavoidably are going to be carried out with the sweat. Mm -hmm. And there are oils, too. Mm-hmm. And uh, these micrococcal bacteria will break down the oils when they eat them. Basically, they ingest it, and then their uh, byproducts will smell. Their waste. Their yep. waste products. Yep. Basically, they're breaking it down, and it's not really a process of fermentation, but they're metabolizing it, and then uh, their waste products and the products of metabolism, basically waste products, uh, will have that sort of funky B.O. smell. So micrococcus are the bacteria that cause B.O. smell. Hmm. Now, um, and those colonies like it when your arms are down because then it's moist in there and it's dark Hmm. and it's warm. And um, when they dry out, if they're spore forming, they can maybe form spores if they have time, but most of the time they just die. 
So uh, that's why at the end of the day, you're going to smell a little bit worse than you do at the beginning of the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, just a little tip out there for those of you who have been told that you stink, uh, using deodorant won't cut it. Mm -mm. So um, you have to use an antiperspirant if you stink, and most of you do if you don't (laughs) do this. And unfortunately, right now, the only antiperspirants that we have are aluminum chloride containing, the only ones that work worth a hoot. Mm And there is that new stuff called Lumi, and I, I think it's more of an it, – it inhibits bacterial growth, but it doesn't stop perspiration. So, you know, if you're cool, not smelling, but when you open up – when you put your arms up over your head, you've got these giant pit stains, well, mm-hmm. that's fine. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't want the giant pit stains, and I don't want to stink, so you have to use an antiperspirant, yep. and that's just part of it. And I just deal with it. Um, whatever risk there may be. And it's always, they come out with one study saying it, it has risk. Another study say it doesn't have any risk. That tells me that if there is risk, it's minimal. Mm-hmm. And I'm willing to accept that to not stink. Mm-hmm. As we have some people that I've worked with before, some from other cultures, some from our own culture. Oh, sure. Yep. You know, there's no one group of people that smells more than the other. And uh, but a hundred percent of the time, when they smell that bad, they're uh, they're using a deodorant instead of an antiperspirant, or they're using per- well, I put perfume on, or mm-hmm. I put cologne on. Yeah, it doesn't to cover matter. The smell right, covering makes it the worse. Sp- right, prevention is always the key. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, everybody, um, let's not use food sm- food oriented anti um, uh, smell sprays because when you have vanilla air freshener and you spray that in a room where you just took a dump Mm. it's just vanilla feces that's what you've (laughs) created and i i never i won't let any of my medical students use food imagery when they're discussing something disgusting Mm -hmm. so like even to the point where they say well this person you know we extruded uh pus from from this abscess it was about a cup and it's like no don't ever it's not a cup that's Mm -hmm. a measurement for food right it's you know um uh 240 milliliters that's fine i don't Mm -hmm. give you know use use metric terms right but when you start saying cups or teaspoons or this you know melanoma was about the size of a um an orange an orange and then i can't eat an orange (laughs) you know stop it right it's six millimeters by four millimeters or the um the the material extruded from the infected sebaceous cyst had the consistency of a scrambled egg. Stop it! Yes, now a runny scrambled egg. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or cottage cheese. Cottage cheese. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Then I can't eat cottage cheese for a week. Yep. And I'm not squeamish, but that's just gr- that's just gross. <laughs> so we don't use food terminology to describe gross things in the human body period <laughs> i love it the mucus flow the rhinorrhea which is mucus flowing from your nose had the consistency of simple syrup used in the preparation of a shirley temple <laughs> <laughs> well i don't like shirley temple no i know there i couldn't go. think of a drink no, that know, uses simple syrup i know i know i was but being anyway. stupid all right well i was stupid all right I guess we got time for another. Hey, Doctor Steve, I had a question about lidocaine. I just had it okay. to me not too long ago. For the people who don't know what lidocaine is, it is um, it's a what it does is it shuts down certain channels for charged um, nuclei or not nu- yeah yeah charged atomic nuclei to pass through those channels, and when that is stopped no electricity can flow because that's how it flows in the in mm-hmm. the human body and in nerves is you get these inflows of uh, these charged particles and um you know any any movement of a charged particle it's electricity sure right and will actually cause a, a small um uh, a char- movement of a charged particle will induce a magnetic field mm-hmm. but anyway uh so when you shut down those channels then no charged particle can move, mm. and therefore no signal can move from that nerve to the brain, and therefore it's an anesthetic. Right. Okay. All right. So, and I was awake for the procedure. Of course. So this guy had a vasectomy, and he was awake. Don't 
we don't put people asleep for a vasectomy. No. It's an external. It's just turn your head. Yeah. It's ba- well, <laughs> Look away. Yeah. You know, if they do like you, they did me, they put me in what's called dorsal lithotomy position, which is basically you're delivering a baby, right. and uh, you can't see no. your taint when when you're on your back and your knees are pointed to the ceiling. Yep. Okay. So. And it took me a while to get numb. The doctor remarked that she had to use more lidocaine yeah. than normal. I don't know why. She made the comment, I don't know why it's taking you longer. Yeah, she didn't know. So she just gave you more, and then it worked. I've had people mm-hmm. that I can, uh, if I'm going to take a toenail off, I have to give them way more uh, lidocaine than I normally would uh, for somebody because everybody's different. Yeah, sure. And sometimes we are rapid metabolizers of these things. Other times, somehow those channels are just refract, you know, a, a refractory to it. Uh, are um, not immune in the right word, but in the colloquial, you know, they're immune to it. Right. Or it just takes a higher dose. Everything like that is it's true. It's totally different. If that weren't true, I'd give everybody five milligrams of amlodipine right. for their blood, blood pressure, pressure, and everybody would be fine. So it's just everybody's different. So that's all it is. And you're not a, a, a maybe that's your mutant power. You know, you were saying something about uh, whether redheads have issues with uh, anesthesia, right? Was that you? That was me. But you know what? What was that about? Well, what they what what they actually found out was that who's they? Well, it's researchers. Okay, because <laughs> you know they could be they. television's fabulous Van Patten family. Um, it, it it appears now. I'm reading from Medical Daily. Yeah, that people that are redheaded tend to be a little more sensitive to painkillers. Maybe they don't metabolize as well. And they appear, the, and they appear to have. Um, they they need more. Now this is from one study. Okay, more okay. gas Just, during anesthesia. More gas during anesthesia. Oh, that's interesting. Well, that's not lidocaine, but that could be interesting, yeah. though. Well, yeah. well, well, dude, if you're listening to this, call back and let us know if you're redhead. Yeah. Oh, well, by the way, they also rarely go gray, and they have more sex. There you go, bastards, sons of bitches. <laughs> I am partially redhead. All right, let's get this going. So tell the story about why are we doing this song? Yes, yeah, so we have a friend, Amanda, down in Georgia, who uh, bought some simple arable stuff and made a comment and thanked us. And we sent her one of our fabulous um, signed uh, photos with our, you know, P.A. John Sucks thing on it. And, um, okay. and uh, she thanked us, and I said, shoot, we should just do a song, that old Waylon Jennings song, Amanda, for her. And All right, let's do it. She said she loves it, so we'll... We, I'm sure we can screw this up too. Yeah, we just learned this five minutes ago. So. Mm-hmm. All right, bring it. Yeah, here we go. Well, I've held it all inward. God knows I've tried. It's an awful awakening in a country boy's life. Look in the mirror in total surprise At the hair on my shoulders and the age in my eyes i the light of my life Fate should have made you a gentleman wife Amanda, the light of my life Fate should have made you a gentleman wife It's a measure of people who don't understand The pleasures of life Got my first guitar when I was 14. Now I'm finally made 40 and still wearing jeans. Amanda, the light of my life. Fate should have made you a gentleman's wife. Amanda, the light of my life Fate should have made you a gentleman's wife Well, 
There you go. Send my sweet Amanda. <laughs> All right, well, hmm, Lovely, I, might, I might edit out a little bit of that. <laughs> uh, thanks always go to Dr. Scott. We can't forget uh, Rob Sprantz, Bob Kelly, Greg Hughes, Anthony Cumia, Jim Norton, Travis Teft, Lewis Johnson, Paul Ofcharsky, Eric Nagel, Roland Campos, Sam Roberts, Pat Duffy, Dennis Falcone, Ron Bennington, and Fez Watley, whose early support of this show has never gone unappreciated. Listen to our SiriusXM show on the Faction Talk channel. SiriusXM channel 103, Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern, on demand, and other times at Jim McClure's pleasure. Many thanks to our listeners whose voicemail and topic ideas make this job very easy. Go to our website at drsteve.com for schedules and podcasts and other crap. Until next time, check your stupid nuts for lumps, quit smoking, get off your asses, and get some exercise. We'll see you in one week for the next edition of Weird Medicine.